What if I told you that the screens of our cell phones and laptops, the windows of skyscrapers, the fiber optic cables that connect our world, and the green revolution of electric vehicles and renewable energy all rely on one metal that currently only has one mine in the entire world where it comes from? Well, that metal is called boron, and the calcium boron mine that feeds the world's demand for everything I just mentioned is found in Turkey, where it exported $1.3 billion worth in 2022 alone. What if I also told you that there is another calcium boron deposit well on its way to becoming the only other mine in the world supplying this critical metal, and that the market cap currently is under $15 million? Well, that company is Boron One, and to take a deeper dive into this opportunity, I'd like to welcome their CEO, Tim Daniels. My good sir, welcome. Thanks for having me, Brandon. Yeah, and thank you for coming on as well. Now, before we dive into everything you've been building with your company, Boron One, I'd like you to further explain what Boron is and why it's such an essential uh, metal to our world. Yeah, I'd love to do that. It's not an overstatement to say that Boron affects every one of your viewers' lives every day. Modern society as we know it would be substantially different without Boron. Why? Take a look around you the ceramic tiles under your feet, the uh, fiberglass insulation in your walls, the fiber optic cable running this, this internet feed, uh, the solar panels on your roof, the food you eat, the, uh, uh, the steel roll cage in your car that keeps you safe. Um, these screens that we stare into all day long, every one of those items that I just mentioned that we all use every single day absolutely require boron to make them work. So boron is essential to mo modern life. Um, and when you get into decarbonization, which is the word on every government, and the NGOs, every uh, corporation's lips these days, um, decarbonization and boron go hand in hand. In fact, it's not, again, not an overstatement to say boron is the single most important mineral for decarbonization. Why? Um, all the things that we talk about with decarbonization are getting off fossil fuels, such as solar panels, rechargeable batteries, energy efficient buildings, uh, electric vehicles, nuclear power, wind turbine, and more and more and more. All those items require boron. Um, and so for these reasons, boron is, is deemed a critical material by all governments around the world. And calcium boron in particular, which is what we have, is of particular importance to all these items that we just mentioned. Yeah, and I find that fascinating as well, specifically on how scarce this is as well. Do you mind uh, going into some of the supply and demand dynamics of boron, but more specifically, why it's so important to find another source of calcium boron specifically? Sure, love to. Um, on the demand side, there's well over 500 products and hundreds of buyers right around the world that require boron to make all these good things that, uh, that I mentioned earlier that we all use every day. While on the supply side, uh, basically you can count all the boron mines in the world on one hand. So <laughs> on one side, you've got hundreds and hundreds of products, hundreds of, of consumers of boron. And on the other side, you've got uh, a half dozen suppliers. So there's a great imbalance between supply and demand. In fact, demand is uh, uh, outstripping supply by uh, a large margin today. And that gap is growing each and every year. Um, and that was before decarbonization. Decarbonization is the game changer. Because of decarbonization, um, the, the, the world can expect to see a tenfold increase in demand for boron um, uh, for all, you know, all these reasons that we were talking about. You know, for example, I like to tell people that a Tesla, uh, which everybody equates to lithium, there's actually more boron in a Tesla than there is lithium in a Tesla. A single offshore wind turbine uh, requires about six tons of boron. So all these items that are going towards, you know, making our world greener require a tremendous amount of boron in them. And, uh, uh, and, and, and calcium boron is, uh, again, uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the key types of boron required for all these different items. And uh, today, um, there's only one significant supplier in the world of calcium boron, we have the second supply. So we're sitting in a very nice position. Yeah, it's fascinating to hear that because I don't think people 
pay enough attention enough or think about where all these metals and minerals are coming from. And I know just discussing with yourself earlier, finding out that calcium boron only comes from one place and one mine in Turkey is fascinating. But you also, just like you said as well, that's exactly what you have at your Piscania boron project that already has a robust PEA done for it. It's well on its way to potentially coming uh, the next potential mine with this. Can you describe the opportunity at hand for investors, but can you also just give them a little bit of understanding of how far you've come over the years? Sure. Um, our project has been significantly de-risked. Um, I, I think the statistics show that about one out of every thousand properties that are explored, one turns into an actual mine. The fact that we've completed our exploration, um, we have a, a very robust resource, and we're now uh, uh, turning the corner and have gone into the mine licensing process, um, it shows that we have you know, significantly de-risked this project. We've gone through the long, slow, expensive, high-risk phase, which is the exploration. And, uh, and now we're getting into the fun stuff, which is getting ready to actually build and operate a, a mine. Um, part of the decision to do that was based on uh, the, uh, the PEA that we uh, generated um, this, this past summer, had generated on our behalf this past summer. And, uh, and again, some very robust numbers in that PEA. Uh, for example, uh, I think your viewers will appreciate numbers such as uh, our uh, um, uh, net present value using a 10% uh, discount rate after tax is about 525 million. These are all in US dollars. We have an internal rate of return of 78.7%. Uh, Gross project revenue north of 2 billion US. Our CapEx payback time is less than 12 months. Annual uh, gross revenue uh, projected from the project of about 126 26 million US per year. Um, and against all that, we're sitting at about a $15 million market cap. So, so we, we believe that we represent you know, tremendous value uh, given how robust our numbers are. Yeah, it's actually fascinating to hear everything you just said, all of those numbers, and then to be sitting at a market cap of under $15 million. It just shows you that a lot of investors are not paying enough attention to the mining world, to the exploration world. That will change. It's already beginning to change in a lot of different areas that will continue to change. I think this is going to be the sector to be in over the coming years. So very, very exciting there. Now, in order to do all of what you just said, you obviously need the funding to make it happen as well. How will your, your company fund these next steps towards production? Yeah, sure. That, that's obviously something that we've been working towards for the last several years. Um, one of the challenges with any industrial mineral, such as boron, um, isn't whether or not you can get it out of the ground economically, it's it's who are you going to sell it to and is there an opportunity in the market for a new player, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and so understanding, um, you know, who you're going to sell it to and how you're going to develop the mine become an integral part of, of your steps along the path. We've uh, secured a, uh, um, an, an equity funding partner um, out of London, a company by the name of uh, Osmos Limited. Osmos has committed uh, 22 million euros um, plus 4.2 million Canadian. The, the 4.2 million goes directly into us. The, uh, the 22 million euros goes into the project. And in return for that, they receive 45% interest in the project itself. Um, we're also in advanced um, discussions with several debt financiers who have uh, uh, indicated their uh, willingness and desire uh, to put up the, the balance of the funding needed for the CapEx. Uh, in fact, they're willing to fund about 70, up to 75% uh, of the project in debt. Um, um, and, and, and so, you know, those, uh, those commitments have been, you know, given to us verbally now by several debt financiers um, as well. So we've taken care of our, our funding needs. And uh, from our perspective, we'd like to see as large <clears throat> a percentage on the debt side as possible um, because it's cheap money for us. We're, we're talking, you know, payback of the entire CapEx in less than 12 months. So regardless of, of, of what our, our debt funding costs us, it's off our, our books in, in under a year and uh, the rest of the, you know, the, the, the next couple decades of mine operation is, uh, uh, is all uh, revenue back to us directly. So um, yeah. um, 
so we're, we're, we're happy to have those funding needs taken care of. Yeah. And again, very exciting to hear. It's, it's good to hear as well. But in keeping on the topic of funding, you recently had a private placement of 10.6 million shares at five cents. Are you concerned at all about these shares becoming free trading in the near future? And do you mind quickly giving a cap structure breakdown of your company as well? Sure. Um, so first part of your question, uh, do we have concern about private placement coming out? No, no concern, uh, concern at all. Um, this last private placement, as is usually the case, is with a, a small group of lo very long term shareholders. When I say long term shareholders, I'm talking about a group collectively that uh, has been with us for almost a decade. Um, and in total, I'd say there's about 40 of us. And of these 40 shareholders, we uh, we control nearly half of the shares in, in the company. Wow. And these same individuals, you know, come back to us uh, uh, placement after placement and put more money into the project. And these are guys that know more about the boron market than I do and uh, are, are, are uh, dedicated um, and committed to staying with the project until uh, we reach our you know, true potential value uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate that very much. And obviously your investors do as well. They understand that they're looking for this to become into a mine. They're not looking for a quick bump in a share price. Those specific ones who are coming to these raises, they, they know what they're getting into. Well, it certainly appears that you're at inflection points for yourself, those investors, and for future investors as well, uh, that you're approaching with your company after years of working on getting it to the stage. What should investors be excited about in the near future coming down the pipeline from Boron One? Sure. Um, again, I, I think that the, the long, slow, hard, expensive, high-risk work of exploration, um, that's all behind us. And so when you typically look at the, the, the share price cycle for mining stocks, companies at our stage of growth tend to um, enjoy their, their, their steepest, longest growth curve. And that's at the point where the company has finished exploration and is going into mine development and, and operation. And, uh, and it's also during that part of the, uh, the, 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 the share price uh, curve that you see the demographics of the shareholder base tends to change over from you know, small retail investors um, to the start of you know institutional holdings in, in companies like ours. Um, so we think that that in, in terms of where we are in our growth cycle uh, uh, as an investment, we're, we're right at that that inflection point where investors stand to to see the uh, biggest potential gains in the shortest uh, uh, period of time. Um, in our particular uh, situation, there's several exciting things on the horizon with lots of news flow coming. Um, we are uh, working diligently through the licensing process right now and expect to have you know, some significant news flow uh, with respect to that. Um, we are, for example, in process with our uh, Serbian compliant feasibility study and, and the end of that, <laughs> is uh, and, uh, uh, expected by the summer and, and it's significant in that that results in the uh, issuance of our exploitation license, which again is, is a huge uh, um, uh, de-risking uh, point um, in the life cycle for any company and, and we expect to be at that point um, by this fall sometime. Um, and we are also in the process with several um, potential strategic partners um, on the boron side, not on the funding side. We've taken care of the funding side. But again, one of the keys with any industrial mineral is knowing who you're going to sell it to, for what price and how much you can sell. Um, we have several very interested, uh, 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 large participants in the boron uh, market who are at our negotiating table right now who are very interested in long-term strategic partnership with us uh, to secure their supply lines for the next few decades. So um, we we believe that there's going to be no shortage of uh, some exciting news coming up over you know the next months um, that will you know certainly help to both de-risk the project 
um, attract a whole new um, demographic of investor in, in institutions. And, uh, and, and we believe that this will equate to some you know, significant improvement in our market cap going forward. So exciting times for us. And it sounds like it, Tim. Well, I appreciate so much for your time to go all, all over this in such detail as well. And being the very potentially the next calcium boron mine in the world, the only the second in the world is very exciting to hear. Well, I appreciate you very much for your time and I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future and seeing everything that your company's been up to. So thanks again, Tim. Thank you.